Hello! Today we will present you all the work we've done to bring gliders into the simulation in terms of art, sound, flight models and instrumentation. Hey guys! I'm Benjamin Rieblanc. I'm in charge of art outsourcing for Microsoft Flight Simulator. You are probably asking yourself how accurate the visuals of the glider will be in this new update. Let me tell you how scan and pictures come together to create beautiful aircraft. First, we contact pilots. Most of the time, they kindly invite us to scan and take pictures of the airplane. We try to scan the most complex part of the airplane. It is sometimes tricky, mainly because the cockpit of a glider is so tiny. We also scan most of the fuselage because the airplane is small. And the more data we have, the easier it is for the artist to make a precise model in the best conditions. Thanks to the scan, we ensure all the proportion of our model will be accurate. But we won't have everything we need just by scanning. To have a better understanding of some parts, we must take pictures, a lot of them, like hundreds of them. This way, we are sure we have all the details of the interior and the exterior. Once the artists have all the reference they need, they will be able to work their magic to make sure the visuals in the game will be as realistic as possible. I hope you will enjoy the work achieved on the visual of this glider. For the audio design, our approach was mainly focused on the wind flow, dealing with all the different wind noises that we can identify in flights relative to the glider behavior. But before doing any design, we needed to experience gliders and feel how they behave in real life, get some precious feedbacks from pilots, and as usual, record many in-flight cockpit references. We simulated the wind flow using wind sounds that we connected to variables based on the aircraft physical movements and aerodynamic wind to make it feel more alive. For the chase cam view, which gives us more creative freedom, you will hear your glider movement soaring through the air and clouds. We put an emphasis on the thermal winds, so you can feel the wind raising the glider and making the fuselage and wings creaking. And also, we implemented accurate variometer sounds that we recreated from real recordings. We paid specific attention to the different surfaces you're rolling on, so it will sound different depending on the glider acceleration, giving more depth to the immersion. Finally, we also designed the different kind of launch methods specific to gliders. Soaring is a very different experience than flying a motorized airplane. An experience that brings a new gameplay, instrumentation and flight techniques. In terms of gameplay, you will be able to choose between two different launch methods to take off, a winch or a towplane. We improve the thermal generation under clouds and over hot ground surfaces. The sunshine, the temperature, the sky conditions and the ground surface type will have an impact on our thermal frequency and the strength. Flying in summer or in winter, at noon or sunrise, will not be the same. A new option in a weather panel will allow you to display the thermals and see where you should fly next. A glider is staying in the air relying on two different sources of energy. First, the potential energy, the height above the ground, and the kinetic energy, meaning the airspeed. 
A classic airplane variometer will show the exchange of energy between the two, but a more relevant information for the sailplane pilot will be to show the actual energy losses. How much do you burn your fuel? For that, gliders are equipped with a total energy variometer, compensate to react to acceleration and deceleration. One of the more noticeable effects is the needle that will not move on short stick input like a regular variometer. Flying stream in still air, it will always show a negative value because the glider is always in a constant descent, therefore burning potential energy. Sailplanes can fly for a long period of time or over long distances using the thermal energy to reload their potential energy bucket. It's like having unlimited fuel. You can also find a netto variometer that will simply remove the normal sink rate of the aircraft from the reading, meaning that in still air, soaring at the optimum speed, the reading will be zero. For a more technical gameplay and flying technique, you will not only have to find the thermals, but you will also have to adapt to them to get the better performances. The idea is very simple. If you expect strong thermals, then you should fly fast between them. If you expect weak thermals, then you should fly slowly to keep your altitude and need to climb less within the next thermal. In the instrument, you will find the polar of your sailplane. The optimum flying speed shown on the graph will change dynamically based on your weight. Drop the ballast and you will see the effect on the speed to fly. But you can also enter the average thermal strength expected, known as the MacReady setting, to calculate the optimum speed to fly for that day. Soaring will bring you new skills to observe, understand and play with the atmosphere environment, flight techniques to always stay at the optimum, and strategy on how you will manage your energy. Have fun!